be fair, but, but I, I kind of agree with what you say. If someone exposes themselves as a bigot, uh, it kind of like the world to know. But there isn't, I mean, there is an element of cancel culture there. Right? I guess some people deserve to be canceled. Yes. Yes. If I can yes. respond to that, John, because this is a really important and subtle issue. I think, you know, the debates about cancel culture have been reduced to oversimplified binaries. Some cancellations are justified and warranted. Um, those of us who <laughs> object to yeah. cancel culture, which has been myself, continues to be myself, are only objecting to disproportionately harsh cancellations that therefore create such an intimidating atmosphere that people fear voicing even, you know, legitimate respectful opinions about divisive, sensitive topics. So, you know, to take a, an example where I've had many disagreements with many of my friends, I suspect uh, Jeff may draw the line differently from me. Um, I thought that the statements that were issued by 34 Harvard groups, my alma mater, uh, were absolutely deplorable. Uh, but I did not support the categorical um, statements by uh, law firms and other employers that they would not hire any student who was a member of any of those organizations. Now, first of all, they have a legal right to take that position, but those of us who object to cancel culture say, well, even if you have a right to do it, maybe you shouldn't. It sounds like a blacklist. It sounds like a blacklist. Exactly. Yeah. And so, you know, what I would advocate instead is rather than this, you know, broad brushed guilt by association, let's get into the details. It's one thing if a student is a leader who actually wrote a statement. Right. It's another thing if a student is a passive member, has no idea that the organization even issued the statement. So I would apply the same standards here that I would apply in any other cancellation situation, taking it on a case-by-case -case basis.